hello folks uh, in this tutorial uh, I am going to explain how we can set up a continuous integration in Salesforce with the help of Jenkins and Git. so uh, this is my blog post uh, which I am going to refer for this video tutorial and you can navigate to this blog or any article on my website by navigating to jitendrajha.com slash blog and <coughs> best way to search my article <clears throat> is by using this search so i would be using so let's say you want to search what is egate and everything so you will be able to see all my articles related to that topic so <clears throat> let's get back uh, to our today's topic and that is a continuous integration so um, i almost five years back actually i have written a kind of similar article but the difference was I, I, I wrote that article for uh, ASP.NET and the version con code con code I used a code management tool that was a subversion control and it was MS build now kind of same article but the difference is like instead of using ASP.NET I am going to cover a Salesforce and instead of using MS build I would be using Jenkins here so there are free a uh, few prerequisite softwares here first you need to have ant installed and uh, you will need to have a salesforce migration tool also uh, and that i'm assuming you already have a git and then you can either have eclipse or putigen to generate ssh key i have already written an article previously that how to generate SSH keys with the help of Eclipse and eGit and in this tutorial I am going to explain how to use Putigen uh, to generate SSH key now again uh, before going ahead uh, I would recommend to uh, know how to work with Git and Salesforce so this is one of the article I have written in past uh, which explains uh, basics about git how git works and what are the branches here and how to use eclipse and all those stuff so i strongly recommend if you don't know about it you should visit this article first and then other uh, information i would suggest is like to navigate through, through this article also and it will guide it will guide you that how to use ant migration tool uh, to deploy and retrieve anything from salesforce so basically in this article uh, although i am using a jenkins but the jenkins is just a way internally everything would be done by ant itself so go through this article and once you understand this article then you should be able to go ahead and also there is article uh, about generating ssh key and this is the article there and in this article it is using eclipse and egit but i am going to explain it again in this video tutorial and this time i would not be using eclipse i would be using another software so uh let's start now there are two way we can start with jenkins either you can install jenkins on your local system or you can use cloud base so uh this is also uh okay i guess uh I need to correct this so there is one uh, yeah cloudbees.com so you can navigate here and you can create your account and you can you are good to start however for this uh, article demo purpose I am using uh, my local system so this is how uh, this article is going to work we will set up a Jenkins our Jenkins will pull bitbucket repository every 15 minutes and it will check if there is any commit or if there is any code change in this bit repository if there is any code change then our run and script would be running and this end script is nothing but our force.com migration tool so it will having a uh, two target first target is it will retrieve a changes from one sandbox and then it will deploy changes to another sandbox once the complete build is done it will deploy it will post a result of that build on chatter chatter wall of that user and result may be success and result may be fail so uh, let's start we will start uh, with download, downloading installer of jenkins this is a website i used to download 
and I'm using Windows 8 operating system so I used Windows 8 uh, so you need to download this and <coughs> once it's downloaded uh, you can run installer uh, during installation it may ask you that do you want to install Jenkins as a Windows service you should click yes because you may like to have an option like to schedule a Gen Jenkins to run after every 10 minutes or 15 minutes so at that time uh, this option would be useful once you install Jenkins uh, so let's see how Jenkins looks like so this is Jenkins uh, so in my system it's installed on localhost 8080 and once you install Jenkins, you would like to install some plugins also. So you should navigate to manage Jenkins and then manage plugin. In manage plugin, uh, in available, search for Git. So we need to install a Git. We already have, I already have a Git installed here, but this is how it would be available. So you have to choose option Git available from here. I would also recommend to install Bitbucket. So these are all the plugins I have installed. So if you can see, I have installed this plugin. That's why custom uninstall button is appearing here. So that's the Bitbucket plugin. And then I have a Git client, Git plugin. So these are all the plugins I have installed. Once you install a Git plugin, uh, next plugin I would like you to install is a Shatter plugin. So to install a Shatter plugin, uh, there is very good plugin written uh, by Superfell. So this is the repository place. I would recommend you to download uh, this zip file. Once you download zip file, uh, you can run this plugin by using MVN. So let's try it. So I'm downloading it here. So you can extract. So this is already extracted version. So you can simply open command prompt and in command prompt you you have to uh, navigate to this directory and simply run a command mvn it will automatically search for pom.xml so in this case we already have a pom.xml and it will start uh, building a file so basically if everything is good then you can simply go to the target folder and this is the file of our interest let's let's say if you don't want to go through all all these issues or all these steps so maybe uh, you can simply go on my website and i have posted file here you can download a file here but you have to make sure that you need to change extension back to dot hpi so uh, that's all uh, regarding the chatter plugin once you have that file uh, let's see so we see that build is successful and it should already have a target folder here so in target folder this file is already there you just simply have to upload this file in Jenkins so let's see how we are going to do it so I'm going back on my Jenkins setup here so then you have go you have to go to advanced and then advance you have to select upload plugin and in upload plugin choose uh, that file so this is a target and this is the HPI file you need to upload once you upload this HPI file chatter plugin would be installed on your Jenkins so <clears throat> here if I see my available plugins so in my available plugin sorry in my installed plugin I already have a chatter installed so this is chatter plugin so uh, let's go back on uh, we can set up a new item here so let's start with uh, setting a project now so <clears throat> okay so before setting a project I'm assuming that you already have an end script ready so this is a sample of my end script now this end script have a two targets so one target is retrieve so basically what retrieve is doing it is using a Salesforce migration tool using this username and password it is retrieving all the changes from the sandbox one now this username and password is actually coming from build.properties file and in this retrieve itself i have created a micro definition for git so basically git is not supported uh, 
and but we can create a macro so basically what it is doing it is committing all the changes received on my system with git commit command and after retrieve you can so after sandbox one is retrieve and you can see that we are deploying changes of from sandbox sandbox one to sandbox two so this is the code snippet of build.xml so assuming you already have it let's start with setting up bit bucket account so uh you can just go on Bitbucket account, your bit, uh, and you can start with creating a new repository. So you can go and create a new repository here, name of your repository and anything, and you can select Git and you can click on the create repository. Once you create a repository, you would like to set up the SSH key here. So I would be using a putty here. So you can generate a ssh key by using this software this is a putty key generator so i am saying okay let's generate a key and you have to hover your mouse here so that randomly it will generate ssh key <coughs> once ssh key is generated so this is a public key you would like to uh, save so this is a public key and you need to save a private key also so it's up to you that you want to save it as a passphrase or not so you can say yes i want to save it without any passphrase and then you can save your public keys just for a demo purpose i am saving it on my desktop so i am saying demo if you open this public key here sorry this is a private key so this is how it looks like but in bitbucket so here is my bitbucket account you need to add if i see ssh keys you can add a new key you can give any name here sample jenkins and here you need to copy a public key so this is a private key and this is a public key. you simply have to copy this and paste it here and then click on add key so uh this is a very simplest way to generate ssh key now let's see how we can use a jenkins to set up a new project so to create a new project you have to go on uh, your jenkins installation localhost 8080 click on new item you will be provided by lots of options here you can give any name so let's say demo jenkins you can select a freestyle project and you can click on ok the time you click on ok i'm not going to click on ok because i already have one project so i, I will simply show you that what's that project so this is my project uh, I can simply go here. I can click on configure. So this is how you have to set up a project. So important part is here source code management. So in source code management, you have to select Git. Now open your Git repository and whatever the URL of. So I have, uh, let's say uh, this URL. So you will have two types of URL, either the SSH URL or the HTTPS URL. You, we would be using SSH URL, so copy this URL and paste it here. Then you have to, you will need to create a new credential. So click on add. Now type of the credential should be SSH username with password. Now this is a private key. So the private key is nothing but the pp dot ppk file you have saved here. So just copy this and paste it here. If you have any passphrase, so you can provide your passphrase here and then click on add button. So it will automatically appearing here. Now the next step is like build trigger. This step will say that when do you want Jenkins to trigger? So I have selected a poll SCM. That means it will pull my Bitbucket account on, on this interval. And after this interval, uh, it will check if there is any code change on my git repository or not if yes it will build if no it will just wait for next 15 minutes now this is nothing but the chrome statement no need to know how to set up this there is very awesome site here uh, something like this chromemaker.com you can just simply select at what minute whatever and whatever time you want to generate crone and it will give you the crone statement expression here so i just use this and i want it to run after every 15 minutes so this is how a statement i came up with so 
once this is done next step is uh, basically what do you want to build so we want to say okay invoke and so invoke and is nothing but uh, our and script so you you need to go on advanced tab you have to go to the root folder so if you go here imagine so this is my build.xml file so you need to copy this path supply this path here and then you have to provide the name of the target separated by space so this is my build.xml and first i am saying okay retrieve it from sandbox 1 so it will retrieve then i am saying deploy it on sandbox 2 then it will say deploy once this is done so this is actually the build step once it this is done it's up to us what you want to do with that result now we install a charter plugin here i am saying that whenever the build is done use this username and this password and post result on my chatter wall if you are using a sandbox then you have to provide here test.salesforce.com or your my domain and you simply have to click on save button so uh this is my chatter wall so what you can see once you save it this option will be available which is git polling log so it will show that what was the last time it pulled uh, your uh, git repository so as i said it will pull after every 15 minutes so it says that it pulled around 9 12 pm so this is 9 20 uh, right now it's 9 25 pm so uh, almost 12 minutes back it tried it says no change so nothing happened here so it was it will keep pulling every 15 minutes and it will try to build if there is any changes it found if you want you can also click on build now it will manually trigger so just to test that if our end script is working properly or not let's say build now so you can see here in the build history section number 16 so and you click on the console output so console output will give you all real-time information so right now it's a retrieve command is running on so if you check build.xml this is a target name so it it ran that one now it's trying for deploy so it is running a command deploy and you can see build was successful and now the build i will go back to project my build number was 16 now go to my chatter and i will refresh my chatter wall it will say that build 16 is success and this is the url of my build and it just posted now so uh this is how uh, jenkins works it's very easy to set up and i will say that a basic all mantra for Jenkins is but is nothing but your end script it just invokes your end script and that's it so uh please leave your comment uh, on comment section and keep watching uh, my youtube channel for more videos related to salesforce thank you very much